Goals allow us to track workspace level initiatives as well as team and personal KPIs to make sure everything we're doing is aligned within our organization. While there's a lot of ways we can use goals, we're going to focus on three different use cases today. First, let's start by uniting a product development team with a marketing team in a feature launch. Let's start by creating our marketing goal. Now, the first decision we'll make is the privacy level. Should this be a public or private goal? Public means everyone in the workspace who's part of the workspace team will have access to this goal. Private means only those invited to it should see it. In this case, since this is something that's aligning our entire organization, I think I'm going to leave this goal public. Next is the target date. Every goal needs to have a target date. When do we want to fulfill this by? Next is our progress source. What's constituting this goal? Tasks and lists will allow us to manually select which tasks and lists should contribute to the goal. The remaining options here, custom field, tag, user tag, and assignee, will automatically tie tasks to the goal if they fit the rationality. And we'll check that out a little bit later. But for this example, we're going to use tasks and lists. Next is our track metric. What about these tasks are we tracking? If we say task count, we're counting the amount of open versus completed tasks. But we have other options as well, such as track time, story points, and a custom field value. For this example, we're going to use our task count. We just want to make sure all the tasks that we're saying we need to do for this launch are completed by that launch date. Lastly, our target, dynamic or static. Dynamic means our target will adjust based on the array of tasks added to it. In other words, we need to complete all of the tasks in this example. Static would be a specific amount, so 100 tasks. But like I just said, we want to make sure we have all of these completed, so we're going to make this a dynamic goal. All right, and let's create it. So our goal is created, and like I said, since this is a tasks and lists goal, we'll manually select the tasks and lists that we want to add into this goal. We can do that from right here inside the goal, but first I wanna give you context as to what we're doing and why. So let's open up the project that I'm going to be working off of. And we can see here that we have our lists with the different social media and email posts that we're going to be sending out leading up to this feature release. So I can actually go ahead and add these to the goal from within the list or from within a specific task. But for the sake of the video, let's do this from goals. So I'm going to add from my feature launch marketing project, my social posts and my email campaign. Now, as we complete tasks within these lists, we will see not only the list progress move forward, but the overall goal progress move forward. All right, so we created our goal for our marketing as it pertains to this feature launch. Next, let's create our goal for our product and engineering. Then we'll unite the two goals. So before we create the goal, I want to show you the two projects within our product and engineering portfolio. And you can see both of these projects have tasks in them that I've applied a tag to, feature one. As we know, if we create a tag in one project, it's available in all of our projects. So this is a great way to unite information across projects and even portfolios. And we're going to use this to our advantage when we create this next goal. Okay, so yet again, we're gonna leave this one public. We're gonna set that same target date as we had for that other goal. This time, we're going to use a different progress source. Instead of selecting the lists and tasks like we, we saw in our previous example, we're going to use tasks with tag. And as you might guess, we're going to use that feature one tag. So now we're saying any task in our workspace that has feature one applied to it contributes to this goal. We're going to keep our track metric the same. Again, we want to make sure we're completing all the tasks that we deem necessary to have this feature one launch go live. So we're going to use that 
task count track metric. And similarly, we're going to keep our target as dynamic. Unlike our last example, you can see here, this one automatically added all the different tasks between the two different projects that have that tag attached to it. Now, if we create more tasks and attach that tag or remove that tag from tasks, the goal will automate automatically update. So it's going to reflect that in real time. So now we have our product and our marketing goals as it pertains to this feature launch that's coming up. So let's unite them by creating a goal group and we'll call it feature one launch. product engineering and marketing efforts. Okay. Now we can create these goals in a, I'm sorry, these goal groups in advance and add goals directly to them, or we can do it after the fact by going to our goal options and say, we want to tie this to the goal group feature one launch. We'll see when we add those into our goal group, it's going to collapse really nicely. So goals automatically will show in the order of their target date. Since these all have the same target date, they're showing up at, in the same order. If we add them into goal groups, then our screen will show based on the alphabetical order of our goal groups and then our goals with our target dates. Okay, one more example to go. So we've seen how to use goals to align our product engineering and marketing efforts ahead of a feature release. But let's look at an entirely different way to use goals, this time to track our sales efforts. To add a little context, let's check out our sales project first. And you'll see that I've created a custom field to indicate the prospective budget for all of our targets. We're going to use this field as part of our goal. So let's create a new goal We'll call this one Q4 sales target. Set this for the end of the year. Now for the progress source, this time we're going to use tasks with custom field. So I want to say the project budget custom field that I've created. So we're selecting tasks that have a value in that project budget field. Next, our track metric, we're also going to use the custom field value. So what about that task do we want to track? The actual value in that project budget field. Lastly, our target. Now dynamic would mean any number that's in that field is our goal, right? So the all of, our, all of that value summed together would be our goal. That would be great if we could close every piece of business that comes in the door. But if we were to add a static value, you can say, we want to close, let's say $100,000 worth of business. All right, so now that our goal is created, you can see it automatically adds these tasks into it. And we can see we're 20% the way through our goal based on our target and what's been closed. We can also use this to track our individual salespeople's efforts towards their individual goals. So we might create a goal for just one person, Jessica. In this case, for our progress source, I use tasks and lists so I could select whichever targets are specifically hers to focus on and give her her own individual target. 